What's happening, guys? Keith here with another edition of the Impact Report. So this past week's Impact drew 299,000 viewers and ranked 124 on Cable's Top 150. This is a little down from last week. I believe they drew 309,000 viewers last week. But this week was down due to the NBA playoffs. Um, I think they drew somewhere around 8 million viewers. Especially tough considering it's the same demographics. Uh, the, you know, these things are bound to happen with the NFL during their season, NBA and NHL playoffs, especially with the amount of viewers they draw. Again, like I said, it's kind of the same demographics, so it's really tough to match up against these things, and I really don't think we should put too much stock into it, especially considering the fact that Impact is putting on consistent shows week to week, and that's really the thing that's going to bring back viewers. So, I mean, 300,000 is still pretty good, and, you know, there's only so much they can really do on pop TV, so... Hopefully it trends upward, but like I said, I don't think we should read too, too much into it. So this past week, Impact Wrestling debuted a new show on their Twitch page called Behind the Lights with Anthony Corelli, a.k.a. Santino Morella, and Destiny Wrestling's Iceman. Uh, they basically talked about the latest news in professional wrestling and mixed martial arts. I actually haven't been able to watch it yet. I, I did see some of it. But uh, I was told it was a really good show, very well put together, and very professional. Um, they did talk about Impact Wrestling. I read an article, and topics included the uh, roster change, the redemption pay-per-view, and the future of Impact. It looked to be about a two-hour show, so they must have covered a lot during it. Uh, I look forward to watching it, hopefully catch that sometime this week. Kind of tough keeping up with wrestling from multiple organizations just so much going on week to week and i really don't want to burn myself out uh so lucha underground's ivalice recently spoke with wrestling pro weekly and uh, she bro brought up that she is interested in wrestling for impact wrestling uh here's what she had to say they had not asked me which is kind of odd i've even asked lucha underground what's up with this joint program with impact Obviously, it's something I'd love to do, and it's great exposure that would help a lot while Ucha, Lucha Underground is dark. But they have not asked me, and i kind of trying to figure out why. But I'm going to keep doing my thing, and one way or another, I will shine. Uh, very good talent. There was rumors about attitude issues with her. I mean, like I said, they're just rumors, so I'm not going to read too much into it. It's, I mean, if she, it would make sense for her to... Be a part of the Impact roster, the Knockout division. I mean, just help add another great talent to the division. I mean, we're just going to have to see where this goes. There's so much talent out there that, you know, unfortunately you can't have everybody. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see where that goes and if anything comes of it. So during Friday morning's New Japan wrestling show, uh, Taiji Ishimori was revealed to be Bullet Club's newest member. Um, unfortunately, I have no news on his future with Impact Wrestling, but if he does decide to stay, I, I would really enjoy that, considering his, uh, he's a tremendous talent, and uh, he, he's been nothing but enjoyable to watch since he's been with Impact Wrestling. I mean, there was rumors saying that he did want to go to WWE, and that was part of the reason he left Pro Wrestling Noah, I believe, at the beginning of this year, but like I said, no, no news yet. Uh, he has worked with New Japan in the past, so, I mean, this would be great if if this has something to do with some sort of, you know, working partnership between Impact and New Japan Pro Wrestling, but, like I said, I don't want to read too much into it. I mean, he's kind of free to go wherever he wants, so. So, recently, there was a lot of speculation on what the status of Johnny Impact was. Uh, it was strange not seeing him a part of the Lucha Underground vs. Impact Wrestling show and the Redemption pay-per-view as well, considering him and Congo Kong were in a pretty big feud leading up to the pay-per-view. But uh, Taya took to Instagram and posted that Johnny is coming home on Monday. A lot of you may not know this, but he has been gone for almost seven weeks filming a TV project. So at least we know he wasn't dealing with an injury or something else. I mean, he was promoting Impact on his Twitter page, so we kind of knew he wasn't leaving the company or something like that. But uh, I believe they're getting married June 1st, so they will not be a part of the next set of tapings, which I believe take place June 1st and 2nd. I would assume they would come back post anniversary, and then uh, hopefully big things for both of them, as they're both tremendous talents, and uh, I've enjoyed their work so far in Impact Wrestling. 
So the interactive wrestling radio show recently interviewed Matt Seidel, and uh, he had a lot of positive things to say about Impact Wrestling. He talked about the change backstage feeling in the last show, and uh, he said that one different thing that I could tell you about backstage was there was a lot of monitor sellouts this taping. People really wanted to see what was happening in the ring. The production is coming together. The production looks great. Impact is always improving at all angles. There is a lot of creativity activity and thought that goes into everything. I'm happy to be part of it as we move forward, and I'm happy to move things in the wild direction. I am able to move things and steer things into a direction I've wanted to my whole career. Uh, he also talked about the uh, positive response from the last set of tapings, comparing his time with Ring of Honor, WWE, and Impact Wrestling, his match with Petey Williams at Redemption, being X Division Champion, Wrestling Society X, and the current wrestling scene and the future of Impact Wrestling. Uh, he also mentioned that this past set of tapings were the ones where he was the most heavily involved with. Um, honestly, I could see him being a future world champion. They do seem like they're investing a lot into Matt Seidel. Uh, last year, his matches with uh, Bobby Lashley, uh, then Eli Drake, his feud with EC3. I mean, I, like I said, I wouldn't mind seeing him as a, as a world champion. I don't know how you guys feel, but uh, let me know in the comments section if you think there's a possibility that he could be a champion in the future. So this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference featured Kiara Hogan and Rohit Raju. Um, but before we heard from both of them, Josh came on and talked about the last set of tapings being one of the best he's been a part of, and also saying, there was no drama. So I'm just going to break it up into each individual section. Uh, so Kiara spoke about working with Shimmer and Shine and that it didn't fully click for her back in 2016, but once she stepped into an Impact Wrestling ring, she knew she was where she had to be. Uh, she says this is a dream come true for her, and she's happy with the environment. She loves being a knockout. Uh, her last name is, in fact, Hogan. She started out as a backstage interviewer, so she used her real name. Uh, she also mentions that she had almost had a panic attack before Redemption, and then talks about how Tessa overshadowed her moment which we uh, saw this past week on Impact because this media conference take, took place on Wednesday before the show. So um, that would be the direction they're moving in. We'll get to see Tessa in our first feud with uh, Kira Hogan. Uh, on Rohit came on, and uh, I mean, they kind of went back and forth, but I just broke it up into two segments. He said that he is excited to prove all the naysayers wrong. He talks about great advice he received from Jimmy Jacobs, which was give people a moment not a match. Great thing. Uh, he talks about being nervous on his debut in Impact Wrestling and how he never wrestled in a six-sided ring before. That must have been quite a shock. Um, he talks about the Desi Hit Squad and says that they will all be together for the first time at the June tapings. He also says he's the low man on the totem pole and he looks forward to proving himself as he wants to be top face for the company. So it was good to see some newer talent in Impact being on the media call. Um, you know, it's not always all about the main eventers. Like, we, we've seen a lot of high-profile names normally, so it's good to see some some of the newer people on the call. Uh, so last night was the Penta Does Iowa Twitch show. Um, there were a few hiccups on the show. Uh, audio and lighting troubles in the beginning of the show, um, and then they kind of had some audio issues throughout the show, mainly with the theme music, the entrance music, and then the, uh, the microphone... But, you know, and there was a point when the stream actually completely died. Uh, I missed a good portion of the beginning of the show due to these problems. I mean, I I wasn't going to keep jumping back and forth. So uh, I came back. I turned it back on about halfway through the show. I'm going to hopefully pick up the rest of it later on today. Um, but, I mean, from what I saw, they really put on a solid show. I mean, we have to remember that they're not using the Impact production team uh, so, you know, this kind of a learning curve for everybody, considering this was the first time they've partnered up with uh, Pro Wrestling Revolver. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I think once they continue to move forward, you know, multiple times working with these companies, things will get a little smoother. Um, but, you know, like I said, overall, it was it was a fun show. I mean, the six-man tag with uh, OVE versus Desmond Xavier, Zachary Wentz, and Matt Seidel, that was a lot of fun. Um, I've spoke about this before, and the internet or the Impact fans are finally 
seeing this, but uh, there was a whole bunch of signs Zachary Wentz uh, pointed to, Scott Demore, uh, Don Callis, and obviously Impact's Page. Um, I mean, just bringing him in adds so much. You, you put him and Desmond Xavier together in a much-needed tag division. I mean, we really only have a handful of teams uh, bringing them in just their matches with ov would absolutely be killer they would make for great tv them versus lax just just great matches that could happen and i'm really hoping that you know that they do in fact sign zachary as he is a phenomenal talent and it would just be a positive all around um the house of hardcore match between tommy dreamer and jake manning was uh, pretty ridiculous there was a tent that ended up in the ring at one point and I think Tommy hit him with the Death Valley driver through the tent. And then the uh, main event of Pentagon Jr. versus Jimmy Jacobs in a street fight was crazy. A lot of cool spots, um, a lot of plywood brought out. Um, but, you know, the really great thing to see is that uh, we're able to experience Jimmy Jacobs in a competitor or as a competitor in these shows. And he works around the independents as a competitor still. But then we get to see the other part of Jimmy Jacobs as you know a manager and basically doing everything else with on impact tv the man is a treasure and we are lucky to have him he was one of the names that i was very excited was being a part of impact wrestling and uh he just helps them out so much but that is pretty much all i have for you guys so i will see you this coming week for my impact wrestling review and until next time don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks guys bye